Today I want to share with you how I designed and built a custom air conditioning system for my Camaro. I do open road racing and also like to drive this car around just for fun, but I haven't really had AC in the car for 20 years and haven't really had heat in the car for about 10 years. So a few years ago I designed a new crank pulley with a six rib belt on the front for the alternator instead of the V-belt, and I knew that was going to be essential for running an AC compressor too. So this last year I decided it was finally time to start uh, working on the heat and air conditioning system. I live in Phoenix and I race in the desert, so building a system that would work in those temperature extremes was pretty important to me. I started out by moving to a single big radiator fan. I have a different video on this 850 watt fan too. Uh, but I knew I needed a big fan to be able to keep the car cool and with the added heat load uh, from the condenser. Then uh, as far as the condenser, I learned that you can't really go too big on the condenser. So I found one that fit the entire radiator opening. Obviously it's behind the intercooler there and you can see the, the bottom fitting there in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, but it basically covers the entire front of the radiator. Then I worked on the compressor next. I picked this uh, Sandin SD5 S11 compressor because it's a bit shorter than the typical compressor and that way I could put it in front of the engine instead of uh, alongside the engine. That allowed me to tuck it in there tighter, keep it low, and have the alternator be low as well. For the compressor outlets, there's a lot of different models you can choose from, but I chose one that was going to allow me to use the um, O-ring pilot style AC fittings. That way I could directly connect it without any adapters or blocks or things like that to the lines that I was going to run. I found that running the lines out of the compressor and under the frame rail instead of bringing them up to the engine compartment was a lot neater. Uh, I think the routing worked out a whole lot better and it kept them away from the exhaust and um, outside the top half of the engine bay here. So the output from the compressor goes under the frame rail. Up here you can see this line up here goes to the top of the condenser. And then the liquid that leaves the condenser comes out that bottom fitting that you saw. And I saw some Australian guys that were running their AC system up through the fender well. And it worked out really nice in this setting. So the lines tuck underneath and run up inside the fender well here. And then your dryer receiver goes behind the wheel in the passenger side. And so this was nice because I was able to fit a really big dryer receiver. It's a 3 inch by 9 inch. And um, tuck that in behind this area instead of having it hanging in the engine bay or trying to fit it up front with the radiator. And then the other cool thing about this is your bulkhead fittings those go into the car right here instead of on the firewall. And that makes routing the hoses on the inside way easier because you have a little bit longer hose. It's not such a short hose straight from the firewall into the, um, into the evaporator. Uh, of course, the suction line comes out here as well and then goes up under the fender well just like the other one. Now, the heater core lines, those do go through the firewall. And you can see I have two 10 AN bulkhead fittings down there for the heater lines. And uh, those connect to the top of the intake manifold here. That's the feed line, which that's the easiest place to get some hot coolant. And it's also higher pressure. And then the return fitting is connected to the water pump intake line, which is, of course, a lower pressure area. And that way you get good coolant circulation through the heater core without having like a second pump or something like that. Now, of course, the air, sorry, the water that goes through the heater core is um, definitely bypassing the radiator. So it might be necessary to put a restrictor in to maybe dial back that flow, um, but we'll see. That, that's something that would be very easy to do. Now the factory AC on these cars was mounted in this back corner, but I wanted to keep that area clear, so I needed to fit the entire unit on the inside behind the firewall. I looked at about four or five different AC units from different manufacturers, and I used their little mock-ups and things like that, but none of them we're going to fit behind the firewall. I've got a lot of wiring back there already, wiring panels, and so I've got a pretty, pretty uh, compact space back here. So since I couldn't get any of them to fit, uh, I decided I would probably have to make my own. So the first thing I did was I bought an OEM AC unit off eBay for about 100 bucks. It was a 2017 Mercedes E-Class unit, so I knew it would have more than enough capacity for my car. And I tried using that unit as is in the car, but of course it wasn't going to fit under the uh, dash, just like the other units. So my real plan was to use components out of that unit, um, connect them all up, and build a system that way. So we got the evaporator, got the heater core, and then the blower motor, the 
assembly. And these are probably the three most important items, but you also need a way to connect those together and to mix the hot and cold air to make a functioning system. So I modeled these in CAD along with my dash, and after a few iterations, I 3D printed this mixing box. So the general pattern that OEMs use for a mixing box is to send all the air through the evaporator first, and then send a variable amount of air through the heater core by restricting it with a valve after So my heater core slides in the top like that. And then my valve assembly is a piece of aluminum plate and a rod, servo, some gears. That slides in here. So all the air passes into the box through this section here. It's where the evaporator is going to go. And then into this passage in between. And then the valve over here can be adjusted to block off flow out of that area, which forces the air through the heater core. Or at the other extreme, it blocks off air leaving the heater core area, which means it basically is sending all the air alongside the heater core and out this way. So even better systems block off the, the front of the core itself, the heater core itself, so you're not picking up heat that way. Uh, but that makes it a bit more complicated. So the outlets on this mixing box, I have them set up to accept a two inch hose. And so these will go to the vents, the dash vent, the floor vents, maybe even send one to my helmet. Uh, but the car should probably be comfortable enough that that's not necessary. Now for the evaporator, let me slide that in here. So the AC lines, this is the TXV block here. And normally these are hard lines on this particular application. So what I made were some aluminum adapters that connect to the O-ring pilot fittings um, and then fit into these ports on the block here with uh, O-rings themselves. One for the, the liquid and there's one for the suction as well. And then there's a, a block here that goes onto those studs with a couple of nuts to retain these pieces here. And then for the heater lines, I welded some uh, AN nuts on the end of the factory hard line fitting. And then these will clip on just like the factory ones did O-ring fitting. Clip goes on there like that. And now I've got a dash 10 AN fitting on the inside as well. Now for the blower motor assembly, I wanted to reuse the OEM motor controller just because it's built. It's a good device. Uh, but it was a little more complicated than I wanted to reverse engineer at the time. It runs on the LIN bus, which is a little bit more difficult than one that would say just accept a PWM signal. So I bought this 20 amp uh, brush motor controller from Cytron. And I added a little heat sink to it just for some extra capacity. The factory units usually expose the heat sink to blower air, and that helps keep it cool. Um, but I think this is going to be more than adequate. The blower motor draws somewhere between 15 and 20 amps. Uh, when running full speed, and that'll be at 100% duty cycle. Um, but most of the time, it's probably going to be working with way less airflow and, and amp draw than that. So for a controller, I've got a Metro Mini here. Cool thing about this microcontroller uh, board is that it can run right off of vehicle power. I don't need any regulators before this device. Um, can run all the way up to 36 volts just fine. And then I've got a CAN bus breakout board here so that I can connect this to my CAN bus in the car little regulator here to provide extra power to run the servo since that takes a little bit more 5 volt than needed. Um, but that's kind of the control unit. So I've got a, a shroud here that goes over the top of the evaporator. And so that goes on there like that. And then the blower motor assembly gets screwed on just about like that all tucks right up under the dash. Uh, on here there are a lot of different sensors. So I've got air temperature sensors here and uh, this will be for the inlet air temperature and then I've got a corresponding air outlet temperature sensor on this side of the housing. I've got pressure sensors on both the liquid line and on the suction line. Suction lines on, on the other end here. And then I also have temperature sensors on the liquid and suction lines because I just kind of wanted to see that data. Um, and these are all just chained together and will be connected to the microcontroller pretty easily. But I'll do a separate video on all the control and how I plan on uh, making this unit function um, and interface with the CAN bus system.
So I'll do another video with this unit completely installed in the car, all the lines hooked up so you can see how everything flows from both the heater core side and for the AC side. And then I can talk a little bit more about the electronics and show you how this interfaces with the CAN bus and the in-car computer to display all those temperatures and pressures uh, and to regulate and make the whole system work.